In this video, I'll show you how to integrate composite functions using the method of u-substitution. U-substitution is a method of integration which is related to the chain rule. You can select u to be the inside function, for example, the gx in f of gx. Let's begin by considering how we might integrate the composite function cosine to x. Since the antiderivative of cosine is sine, we might guess that the general antiderivative is sine to x plus a constant c. However, if we check this answer by differentiating, we need to apply the chain rule and we'll get 2 times cosine to x, which does not match the function we were originally integrating. This means that our guess was incorrect and sine 2x plus c is not the general antiderivative of cosine 2x. However, our guess was not too far off. We can correct the, for the extra factor of 2 by changing our initial guess of the antiderivative. Let's try multiplying sine 2x by 1 half. Now, if we check by computing the derivative of our guess, we use the chain rule and get the derivative of 1 half sine 2x plus c is 1 half times 2 times cosine of 2x. And 1 half times 2 equals 1, so we can effectively cancel these terms, which gives us the cosine 2x. And we can see that this is equal to the function we're integrating. So this means that 1 half sine 2x plus c is the general antiderivative of cosine 2x. We were able to do this because the argument of this composite function was just 2x. However, our method of guessing and adjusting might not be so straightforward with more complicated composite functions. To understand how we can integrate some types of more, some types of more complicated functions, we can think about the chain rule. The chain rule says that if f and g are differentiable functions, then the derivative of f of g of x is equal to f prime of gx times g prime of x. Then we can think about integrating a composite function as doing the chain rule in reverse. Since the derivative of the left side of this equation is equal to the right side of the equation, this tells us that the antiderivative of the right side should be equal to the function on the left side. That is, if we take the right side of this equation, and integrate it, it should be equal to the function on the left side of the equation plus c. So we can see that doing the chain rule in reverse requires integrand to be a product of a composite function and a derivative of its argument. We can rewrite this integrand to make it look more straightforward by defining a variable u to represent the argument. Instead of g of x, we'll write the letter u. So, if we rewrite our original integrand, we can substitute u for gx. But now we have a problem. In one part, we're using u, and in another part, we're using x. And these do not match. So we need to find a way to substitute something in terms of u for this g prime of x and dx. If we differentiate u with respect to x, since u is just g of x, then we'll get g prime of x. If we multiply both sides by this equation by dx, then we'll get du equals g prime of x times dx, which gives us a way to rewrite g prime of x dx. Now we can substitute du for g prime of x dx. And let's think about what this does for us. Now, instead of trying to integrate a composite function, we're integrating f prime of u times du. And this antiderivative is just f u plus a constant c. And if we switch back from u to x, this is equal to f of g of x plus c. So this method gives us a way to integrate a composite function. Let's take a look at our original example. Originally, we had a function cosine of 2x and wanted to integrate this with respect to x. So we'll rewrite argument as u, then we need to find a way to rewrite this dx in terms of u. If we differentiate u with respect to x, we get 2. 
And then we can rewrite this relationship as dx equals 1 half du. So now we can rewrite our integral. Instead of 2x, we can write u as the argument of the function. And instead of dx, we can write 1 half du. Since the 1 half is constant, we can pull it out in front of the integral. Now we need to integrate cosine of u du. The antiderivative of cosine u is sine of u plus constant c. So this is equal to 1 half sine of u plus constant c. And we can rewrite these terms of x by substituting 2x for u to get 1 half sine 2x plus c as a final answer, which matches what we got by guessing in the beginning. Let's take a look at another slightly more complicated example. Here we're trying to integrate 3x minus 4 times 3x squared minus 8x plus 6 to the 7th power. Our goal will be to rewrite this as an integral of sum f of u du where f is a function for which we know an antiderivative. Sometimes doing this takes a bit of guesswork to figure out what u should be. Let's start by writing u equals to 3x squared minus 8x plus 6. You still got that 4x minus 4 and dx that we need to rewrite in terms of u. So let's see if we can do that. Let's differentiate u respect to x. This equals to 6x minus 8, which is not exactly what we're trying to get. However, if we factor a 2 out from each term, we'll get 2x 2 times 3x minus 4. So if we multiply each side by 1 half dx, we can rewrite this as 1 half du equals to 3x minus 4 dx. So now we'll rewrite our original integrand, integral. We have 3x squared minus 8x plus 6 to the 7th power. We can substitute u for this argument, this term. Then we also have 3x minus 4 dx. We can substitute 1 half du for this term. And we can pull the 1 half outside of the integral to get this is equal to 1 half times integral of u to the 7th power du. We know an antiderivative for u to the 7th. So this is equal to 1 half times u to the 8th power divided by 8 plus constant c. And finally, we can substitute our original guess for u to get 1 half times 3x squared minus 8x plus 6 to the 8th power divided by 8 plus c. This technique helps us to compute integrals of some functions that initially look complicated, such as composite functions. In this technique, we called, we called one of the terms u, differentiated u with respect to x, and used this to rewrite the original integral in terms of a function for which we knew an, an antiderivative, and then substitute our original function back in. Like with other techniques, u substitution takes some practice, but it is useful for expanding our ability to compute integrals.